Good morning and welcome to Wake Up with the Consciousness Cafe. My name is Lisa Ferrero. I am the founder and spiritual director of Soul Call Global. And this morning, it is my humble honor to welcome a real pioneer in the, the world of filmmaking and somebody who is very, very close to my heart and was also near and dear to Erika Luckett's heart as well, who was a co-founder of Soul Call. Uh, please welcome Dorothy Fadiman. Thank you for joining us this morning. It, it's, a, it's a privilege to be here. Thank you. So uh, we're talking about soul callings and uh, in your career as a filmmaker, you've been uh, awarded several Emmys, Oscar nominated, some of the most important documentary films I've, I've had the experience of taking in. Uh, we were talking about your soul's calling and coming back around to Radiance, your first film. Tell us about why that happened. Well, Radiance was actually a response to a soul call. My husband and I, who've now been married more than 50 years. Congratulations. This was on our honeymoon. Uh -huh. And we were in the Caribbean. And we had decided to take together LSD. Okay. I had had LSD before and had experiences of opening and tuning in but I had no clear sense of my own purpose. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions I asked on this LSD trip was, where should I go? What should I be doing? Where, what is my calling? And I closed my eyes and I heard a voice. And the voice said, may I fill you with light? Wow. I didn't, I didn't know who the voice was or where it was coming from, right. but it felt, it felt right. So I said, yes. And I was flooded with the brilliant cascading light. I just felt connected to the universe through light. Wow. And in the middle of this experience, when it was flooding my body, my husband touched me because he didn't know what was going on for me and he was a little bit concerned mm -hmm. because I seemed so deeply connected. Mm -hmm. And I, I woke up and my first feeling was a kind of anger that he'd taken me away from this experience. But gradually I began to realize that I had had <clears throat> enough of what that was, but what I didn't know was what to do with it. Right. I closed my eyes and I went back in and I was told to use this light to convey the spirit in everything, mm -hmm. in human beings, in animals, in plants, in the universe. Mm -hmm. And so I decided I would go on a mission and write a book. And I tried to put this insight, I did lots of research into a book and it just kept not fitting mm -hmm. into a book but I told people I was trying to write this book about light I have boxes and boxes of research and one day I heard a knock on my door and I opened the door and there was a man Michael Weesey who's a filmmaker and he said I understand you're trying to write a book about light I didn't know who he was but he appeared wow. yeah and I said yes he said well Michael Murphy who started the Esalen Institute, told me that you're trying to write a book about light. And he said, why don't you make a film? And he and I together made the film Radiance. And so we're gonna give you the opportunity to, to watch this trailer about this film Radiance right now. Years ago, I had an experience an experience of light. I became conscious of an exquisite radiance permeating the fabric of all life. I realized from my experience that the source of that light is reborn in every moment of creation. Since the beginning of time, people have tried to fathom the mysteries of celestial light. At Stonehenge, the sun, the stars were observed. 
revealing the progressions of heavenly bodies. The sun was worshipped for centuries in Egypt, each ray extending a hand to accept offerings and give life. A place of worship is designed to use light to heighten the senses and invite the spirit. There's a sea of electricity in the human body. Holy light is not just a metaphor, but an actual energy. Our lives are connected to the energy of all life. There's a great desire within me to know how the world works. Show me that pressing, lifting, blinding light of love, born in eternity and living in all that is. Clear my mind. Clear my eyes that I might receive you fully. Let me become a giver of light. It started as a slideshow okay. because I didn't know how to make a movie and Michael was going to teach me. So together we learned. Okay. And what I experienced was wherever I went and mentioned this to people, almost everyone had their his or her own experience of light. Uh -huh. it, sometimes during meditation, sometimes while being sexual and having intercourse, sometimes while being alone in a silent state of reflection, but that this experience of light was common but many people had no idea what the context was. Mm -hmm. So my mission was to learn about and find the ways in which this light had appeared and was used throughout history. And it turns out that in every major religion, light is a powerful force and often the primary experience of the person who began the religion was one of light beautiful and powerful and, and quantum physics is is every day discovering more and more about light and more colors because there's more of different kinds of, of experiences of light as we awaken as a consciousness we become more aware of more subtle vibrations that are be uh, like astral colors are starting to become more visible to most people on the on the planet earth right now and it is this diving deeper into the light opening you were saying it so beautifully before we started to record you were just talking about how it's a it's a gentle light it's not it wasn't a force or an explosion it was more of an unfolding you, you, you were sharing right light as everyone knows is on a continuum from darkness to brilliance and what this film did was it tapped into the subtle places where light is experienced and seen and felt what I tried to do was not give people the experience of light, but ignite the intuitive understanding of how to access your own light. So the point was, and still is, for so this is like so called uh, global, our whole ministry is about for every human on the planet, that's the path to the infinite. We are here on our own journey. And I heard it said that the meaning of life is to experience life, not to read about somebody else's experience and think we know. And so I hear you saying for us to discover our own experience of this light, this brilliance, this relationship to source light. And um, so what yeah. one of the things I did was I went back in time and I chose a number of images and some footage and examples often over altars on people's uh, desktops. Saints and mystics are often shown radiating light. Yeah. This is symbolic, but also people claim they saw it. Like when Moses came down 
from the mountain, people said he was glowing yeah. with light. So that's what I renamed the film from Do Saints Really Glow? That was the original title. Uh -huh. But I renamed it The Radiance, The Experience of Light. So while it manifests visually, it is an experience. We were talking a little bit about the paradox and experiencing light, even in the darkness or even in the pain or the challenges, um, the subtle variations on the theme of light. You were speaking to that a little bit more too. So it, it is kind of the path of the mystic is that paradox. It's like they walk that cent I keep doing this, that center line of it, that they don't deem it good or bad. They see all things dancing in light. It's always held in the light of, of infinite source. Right. And so what I went on to do after I made Radiance was to choose a number of different subjects, yeah. often that just appealed to me personally, or I knew the person or I'd heard the story. And what I looked for often in difficult, challenging situation was where was the light? So the word light took on another meaning for me. It became a way of holding something that might be painful or difficult or challenging mm -hmm in the realm of possibility. And what light does is it gives the viewer, the experiencer, the opportunity to see what's possible, not only what already exists. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a calling to improve our seeing of that which is not seeable with the eye. It's, uh, I, I love the question. If, if that, That's a really excellent question. I, I like questions. and. A, I find the value of the question, where is the light? Not uh, when you're looking at something challenging, when we're experiencing something, where is the light? It, it almost, it, it's like a prayer almost uh, from inside. It, it makes these, it makes it like, it's not so, how do I want to say this? Just by you saying that it, in my mind, it's making the uh, room for the possibility that this is real, not real. The light within it all is real. Right. Yeah. So one of, one of the questions that people on the spiritual path ask is how to experience the light. Mm -hmm. And there's a number of traditions in which you're given direction or how to often to close your eyes, to breathe deeply and begin to open your heart and your mind to the light. And what people report is very gradually they feel and see the light inside become vivid and visual. That it's not just an experience, but it also can be seen. And that's why all the saints and mystics are shown with light around them. Yeah, these orbs of light, yeah. So an example of the light in uh, a situation that's challenging is a woman in one of my films was had uh, spinal cord injury mm -hmm. and as she awakened and to her capacities which she couldn't at first experience like being able to move her hand again she connected that with a, a awakening and that awakening the experience for her was one of seeing more light uh -huh. so when we awaken to possibility that's often connected to seeing the light so we begin on, on so-called Sundays. We like to start our programs with a uh, an experience of Qigong, which is pulling in the light, working with the energy in the body so that we can become more proficient at the subtle vibration of being able to feel it. You know, I, I often suggest we've got pores in our skin uh, to be recognizing that we could, be, we could become more porous in nature and, and move through the light, let it like flow right through us. Uh, to allow ourselves become light, to see more light. Uh, do you have a practice that you appreciate with experiencing light? Not to tell us how to do it, but just something that helps you energize or become more aware of it when sometimes it's harder to see. Well, How do you center yourself? Well, two, two things. One, every morning I sit. And while I sit, I gently chant to myself to open my mind, open my heart, 
and open the space around me so that I can experience life. And very often what happens is I experience a glow from within. And I wanted to share this with other people. So I began gathering people to share this experience. And I've been doing this now for almost 40 years that I have a circle of women in this particular exercise oh. and we all gather, we we're each in our own homes because during the pandemic, we can't do this together. Yeah. And we all close our eyes and then we share in experiencing the light. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the stages of this is not only did I experience it or yeah. do I want others to experience it, but I've developed a practice where I share the light and we all can feel this glow between us and among us. And yeah. given what's going on in the world at this point, it, particularly in the United States of America, there's a reawakening to the need to collaborate and work together. And I feel that that is a gener that generates the light of awareness, the light of consciousness, and the light of spirit. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. I, I agree. It's um, sharing where we find light or how we share the light, um, what comes to us through us as light and when we offer it back into itself as what it is. I love what you're sharing, um, collaborations of light, such a beautiful, simple, it's a simple but incredibly profound practice of sitting and focusing on the inner light. Um, it, sometimes there's a resistance. Um, I know in, when I'm uh, working with younger students, there's still the idea that, oh, I find it in nature and I find it here and I find it. Yeah, you find it all there. And when we can find it within, we find it even more places without. So I think starting a practice like that, not to the exclusion of others, but uh, bringing forth our own light, um, like Rumi would say, um, Give the lover an unlit candle and she'll awaken it with her own light. And, uh, exactly. exactly. You, I think of, I say that specifically to you because you've awakened so many with your beautiful light, Dorothy, in so many ways. Well, I've decided to re-release Radiance. Radiance. It was made 40 years ago and it was this huge hit, bestseller 40 years ago. And many people were just awakening to spiritual experiences, how to have them, how to share them, and so on. I've decided to launch it on June 20th. Ah, 20th. Yeah. Okay. You know uh, what the date June course. 20th is. Yes. Yes, it's going to be the summer solstice. solstice. And I felt that, and what I've decided to do is put a lot of energy into creating little clips of radiance and put them online for several months before the film is released mm -hmm. because I'd like to plant the seeds of light and on June 20th, let it explode. Now, where will we be able to see it on June 20th? Tell us how we can find it. We'll see it everywhere, but for well, our that's purposes. A, that's a really good question. You. Well, I'm going to send you, I mean, this, you can do this cut into this. I'm going to send you the link. I don't have the link yet, okay. but will be, it'll be visible throughout the world on June 20th, but okay. I'll, I'll send you the link. <laughs> you know, it's serendipitous, Dorothy, because um, we are starting, Natalia and I are starting uh, with Soul Call Global, a movie night, and it's once a month and it's movies like this. So that could be our June feature. As a matter of fact, it will be if we have the opportunity to do this with you. Well, actually, now that you mention global, yeah, what I've done is I've made a big financial commitment to give everyone in any country in the world the opportunity to translate Radiance into their language. And I will create a subtitled version of Radiance in any language because I was aware that it began with me in California and then it went yeah. to the United States. But now I'm where I would like to share it with the world. Beautiful. Congratulations. And thank you again for, for resurrecting this beautiful piece of light, of art, of inspiration. Uh, it, it's so timely, the simplicity. And the, it's again, it's simple and profound. 
and most profound things are. It's just calling us to turn off the senses, the sensationalism, the things that pull us out and allow us to find that inner light and gently bring it forth in collaboration where we can amplify, amplify the light, amplify the love. That is the key in collaboration. Yeah. Because we're, there's a phrase, which I'm sure you know, where two or more from the Bible yeah. are gathered. Yeah. There am I also. Yeah, in their midst. So the purpose of this, over and above everything we've talked about so far, yeah. is for someone to have the experience of like, and with that experience, connect with spirit and bring spirit to earth through that connection. Yeah. Spirit and light are one and we as vehicles, as vessels are yeah. given the opportunity to bring spirit into form through raise, raising the light. Beautiful. Thank you once again, Dorothy Fadiman. Uh, look out for, be on the lookout for Radiance, which will be coming in June and so-called global will definitely have it available for, through some way or another or more than one. And so humble bow in appreciation to you, Dorothy Fadiman. And thank you all for joining us this morning. And remember wherever you are, remember that you are loved. Peace and blessings.